£3 million is up for grabs at Ascot on Saturday as the track hosts Britain's richest ever race day. Well represented at the fixture, a good old fin. Well, obviously, the, the summer festivals in England are fantastic and didn't need any, any fixing. But autumn was desperately in need of a, a big event like this, a banner flagship day, which... Kipco have sponsored and, and we have it on Saturday and it's, it's a huge event and you know we're an international stable but our brief is to be as international as possible but we're wholly and completely supportive of this day's racing because obviously we're based in Britain for half of the year and uh, we want to support British racing and delighted to be part of it. And one of the real stars for the Champion Series so far has been Opinion Poll and he goes for the, uh, the Stayers race. Yes, I mean, he's probably our best chance of the day, really. He's thoroughly honest, consistent, always tries his best. Looking at the five-day confirmation entries, you know, he's, he's bang there in the mix with the best of them and uh, have a great chance. It's Sadler's Rock and Niall McCullough who surged the lead in the Cup and it's another win for Ireland and for John Ox as Sadler's Rock wins the Cup. The Kipco Champion Sprint, race two on the card, could well be won by James Fanshaw, who runs Royal Ascot winners Deacon Blues and Society Rock in the £250,000 race. Yeah, both seem really well, um, and uh, Deacon Blues has come out of his um, UB race in good form, um, and Society Rock has, has had a nice break since Haydock, and he's, he's, he's back working well. And Deacon Blues really seems to have progressed with each run this season. Do you think he's up to Group 1 company? Well, um, He's won three Group 3s this year. Um, I'd like to have gone to Haydock, but he wasn't quite right there. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to Saturday with him. Um, the, my main concern is if is the ground drying up. You know, we had a nice bit of rain yesterday, but um, we, you know, we could do it with the rain while and this drying wind we're getting at the moment. So could he not run if, if the ground was too fast? Um, well, we've come to that step. You know, it's uh, Monday. It's Monday today and the, the race is on Saturday, so we've got a bit of time. And, uh, you know, I'm very keen to run him, but um, I'd be concerned if the ground was firm. And what about Society Rock? Were you disappointed with his run at Haydock? Um, well, he was sort of rather drawn out of it. Um, I know that um, um, Dream Ahead's a very good horse. He won it, and Hoof it's, um is, is, is um, very good, and, um, and Roger's horse as well. So he's probably... An, um, it was a, a very good race. Um, but we were sort of drawn one, and we slightly missed the break, and they'd gone. We never really got into the race at all. So whilst it was disappointing, there were some valid excuses. And he does seem to save his best for Ascot. Well, he was second um, uh, in Dover in the um, Morris de Geest, um, but his Ascot record is very good. Society Rock, this year's Chevalier, then Star Witness. Society Rock, last year's second, wins this year, wins the Gold Jubilee. The fillies and mares get their moment in the spotlight at 3 o'clock and 35 minutes before saddling Frankel in the QE2, Sir Henry Cecil runs progressive filly Vita Nova. She had a very slight sort of hiccup about 10 days ago. But she either got cast or ricked herself, I think, and it was very, very lame. And we, we test, had tests for her and we, you know, we, we x-rayed her and scanned her and everything, everything was fine. And she seemed to have come, come right back overnight. Uh, she was pretty well getting there before she had this, uh, and she she's worked since and worked very nicely. And she'll do a little bit tomorrow morning, and we're going well. I think she's back on track. I mean, she's a very big, sort of, but a very immature filly. You know? she, she she only ran sort of back end of three, it went up twice, and um, she's an improving filly. She looks terrific, and. Um, as long as everything goes well in the next three or four days, um, she's really entitled to go there with a chance. In opposition is the John Gosden trained Gertrude Bell, who's two from two so far this season. No, we plan to come here. I had her actually going to run uh, in the Vermai, but her blood count wasn't right a week before, so I took her out. She's in good form now. We plan to run her here and retire her to be covered by Oasis Stream. It's uh, Rachel's first homebred. She's won a group two. I said give up breeding immediately. You know, <laughs> don't attempt to breed another one. Um, but she's in great form and she'll run well. She's a kind of filly you can come and get a piece of it. I mean, I think Henry Henry's filly, the form obviously from the Yorkshire Oaks is superb and she's a progressive filly. There's a lot of filly, I mean you've got the Oaks winner in there, you've got Ban Empire in there, won the 
Ribblesdale, you've got some really nice fillets. But as Henry was pointing out, it's coming to mid-October and some of those fillets are just going on you now. Mm. They're just going and you think they're working well enough and suddenly they just slip through your fingers, you know. And so we could get a shock result, but it, again, like the, the sprint, is again, incredible depth in that field. And Freddie bringing that filly over is a nuisance to all the trainers here. Um, and then you look at this field for fillies mile and a half this time of year. It's, it's a pretty smart race. So people have, you know, seen the program put on and really supported it. So this is the schedule for Champions Day. The stayers kick things off at 1.50, while the sprinters are in action next at 2.25. The mile and a half fillies and mares champion stakes is at 3 o'clock, while Frankel aims for his ninth straight win at 3.35 in the QE2. The feature event is at 4.10, the mile and a quarter Kipco champion stakes. And the day rounds off at 4.45 with an apprentice rider's handicap.